Once upon a time in Siren Fall Kingdom, there lived a beautiful princess named Helena. Being the only <laughs> daughter of the king, Helena could have anything she wants. Although Helena had everything, she still felt bored all the time with the wealthy and powerful life of a princess. She always dreamed about a free life where she can live among nature with trees and adorable <laughs> animals around. The king had a wonderful garden behind the palace. He hired the most experienced gardener to take care of it. The gardener took care of the garden with his son, Gilbert, who was a really kind and hardworking man. Every day, Gilbert <laughs> carried the best fruits of the garden for the king and the princess to enjoy. He also brought all the prettiest flowers as a gift for the beautiful princess. Oh my god, how beautiful these flowers are! Bring me my gold as a reward for them. Thank you, your majesty and your highness. Time flew. Helena and Gilbert became closer and closer. Every day, they talked to each other about their wishes in life. Oh, I don't want to be a princess. I just want to live a normal life like you. I can freely wander around the beautiful gardens, live in harmony with nature and adorable animals. I will turn this garden into the most beautiful place in the world, and you can come here to walk <laughs> around every day. Yeah. Gilbert showed his understanding and talked to her every day. Things kept going on that way, and they gradually fell in love with each other as time went by. <laughs> One day, a wealthy young noble named Rodin came to the king and expressed his will to marry the beautiful princess. Your Majesty, I have been in love with Princess Helena for a long time. Today, I come here to ask for your permission to marry her. <gasps> Helena is now old enough to get married. She should marry a wealthy and powerful man, and Rodin can meet all of these standards. Good. I have nothing to complain about you. But I have to ask Helena first. Just go back to your castle and wait for my response. Thank you, your majesty. Father, you want to see me? My dear, I want to ask you something. You are now old enough to get married. So I'm thinking of marrying you to Rodin. You will be wealthy and happy for the rest of your life. What do you think? Father, I don't want to marry Rodin. Why not? Because I love Gilbert, the gardener's son. <gasps> he is only the son of a gardener. He is not the right one for you. Your Majesty, Gilbert and I, we all agree that we will marry each other. What? You didn't even ask for my permission? Summon Gilbert and Rodin here. Your Majesty, your Majesty, I'm here at your command. Both of you want to marry my daughter, so I will have a challenge for you two. You need to go to Shipland, which is most famous for shipbuilding. Whoever comes back here with the most gorgeous ship will be allowed to marry my daughter. Rodin was very <laughs> delighted. He knew that the king was giving him the privilege because he was very rich. It was totally easy for him to go to Shipland, build a ship, and come back. On the contrary, everything was really difficult to the poor Gilbert. However, with his true love with Princess Helena, he determined to start the journey with all of his savings, two gold coins. Be safe, and remember always that I'm waiting for you. Believe me, I will surely bring the most beautiful ship back to marry you. Then Rodin started with a good horse, but Gilbert had to walk. Rodin outstripped him right away. On his route, Gilbert saw a man who was hitting his dog. 
Stop it! Why do you hit him? You can do nothing but eating and sleeping all day. I have to teach him a lesson. Stop! I want to buy your dog. Sell him to me. You want to buy my dog? One gold coin and he's yours. Although the price was too high, he couldn't stand seeing the dog in that situation. Gilbert immediately gave him a gold coin. Now you are free. Go wherever you want. After that, Gilbert left, but the dog kept following him. Oh. <laughs> you want to go with me? Come on then, be my companion. So Gilbert and his dog happily continued the journey. This time, they met a man who was offering for a sale of a falcon oh, no. in the cage. He desperately turned his eyes to Gilbert for help. How much for this falcon? Not less than a gold coin. Gilbert huh? gave him the last <laughs> gold coin to save the poor falcon without thinking too much. <laughs> now you are free. Go wherever you want. <laughs> you want to go with me too? Okay, let's go. So Gilbert, with his faithful dog and falcon, continued their journey to Shipland. Speaking of Rodin, with his good horse, he reached Shipland much sooner than Gilbert. Rodin met a poor old woman in rags. Good day to you, young traveler. I have eaten nothing hmm. for three days. I am hmm. dying of hunger. Please, give me something to eat. <clears throat> well, leave me alone, you poor beggar. I won't give you anything. <laughs> Gilbert cannot catch up with me. Let's just have some fun for several days first. So Rodin went to rent a room in a grand luxury inn. He used much of his money on the feast, and more seriously, on gambling. Soon, all of his money and possessions went away. He had nothing left. Out of money, Rodin got poor. He became a homeless person, working as a laborer to earn for a living. At last, Gilbert and his two companions could reach the gate of Shipland after a long journey. He also met the old beggar. Eh? Good day to you, young traveler. I have eaten nothing for three days. I am dying of hunger. Please give me something to eat. I will be really grateful for that. I only have this cake left. Please take it. Suddenly, a miraculous light flashed, and the poor old woman turned into an old fairy. Gilbert, I have been following you for a long time. You are such a kind man. I wow. give you this bronze ring. Keep it carefully. It can give you anything you want. Great. Thank you so much. Gilbert entered Shipland and happily went to the shore to make a wish. I wish to have a gorgeous golden boat. The boat must be full of treasure to use as gifts for Helena, along with many crew members to help me. No sooner had Gilbert finished his wish than a beautiful golden boat appeared in front of him. Suddenly, Rodin, who was dressed in rags, stepped forward. He recognized Gilbert immediately. This is your boat, right? How are you suddenly such a rich man? Yes, it's mine, thanks to this bronze ring. Gilbert told Rodin the whole story about the bronze ring without any precaution. Ooh. You are having troubles. You can go back to Sirenfall with me on the boat. I'll be pleased to help you. Rodin was extremely mm. jealous of Gilbert's fortune. His mind came mm. up with a plan to steal the bronze <laughs> ring from Gilbert. <laughs> when Gilbert and the two animals were asleep, Rodin quickly stole it. I want the golden boat to be mine, and for Gilbert and his animals to be stuck in a shipland forever. <laughs> now Princess Helena is mine. About Gilbert and his companions, they were sent back to the Shipland coast. What? My goodness, I helped him go back. How can he treat me like that? Seeing Gilbert's sadness, his dog and falcon immediately went together to find the bronze ring and bring it back to him. 
The dog sat on the falcon's back, sniffed around to search for Rodin and show the direction for the falcon. With the speed of the falcon, the two faithful animals were able to catch up with the golden boat quickly. Rodin was about to sleep. He carefully put the ring into his mouth. When Rodin had slept deeply, the dog quickly sprinkled pepper onto his face. Rodin immediately sneezed, and the bronze ring came out of his mouth. Taking the chance, the griffin flew there and clutched the bronze ring. Give me back my ring! The dog jumped on the back of the falcon. They flew away, leaving Rodin back behind with anger. Right after that, the two loyal animals brought the ring back for Gilbert. Thank you, my dear friends. I wish the golden boat was back, and that Rodin the traitor would be a laborer the rest of his life. Wow! <laughs> Immediately, Rodin was sent back to Shipland, where he had to carry the goods every day. Gilbert and two faithful friends went back to the Siren Ball Kingdom on the Golden Boat. Gilbert and Helena were really happy to see each other again. The king was surprised to see Gilbert had come back with a gorgeous boat to become the winner. The king kept his promise and agreed to marry the beautiful princess to Gilbert. Gilbert wished for a house in the jungle with a green garden and adorable animals, as Helena always wanted. They lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a flower fairy who ruled a beautiful kingdom called Manasilla. That is why the kingdom was full of beautiful blooming flowers. In a peaceful village inside the kingdom, there was a poor farmer named Rosa, who was very beautiful, gentle and kind. She loved to plant flowers and play with birds. In her spare time, she often went to the flower field in the village and took care of the birds. In her garden, she also planted all kinds of flowers and took care of them very well. <laughs> Rosa had a neighbor whose name was Melanie, an evil witch. Because she always disguised herself to look normal, no one knew that she was a witch. In contrast to Rosa, she was very cunning and cruel. She had a snake head shaped stick, which was always with her. She often consulted it and it often told her to do bad things. Melanie also loved planting flowers. Oh, my beautiful flowers! But her flowers were always withered and never looked fresh. She looked at her neighbor's beautiful garden. She was very jealous and angry <laughs> because Rosa was more beautiful than her and her garden was also very beautiful. One day, a beautiful and colorful bird flew to the witch's garden. It sang some beautiful songs to welcome the spring. But unfortunately, its songs accidentally woke the wicked witch Melanie up. Annoying bird ruined my sleep. Melanie angrily took the snake stick, heading to the garden. As soon as she found the bird, she swung her stick up. A cloud of smoke ah! shot straight towards the bird and swept it away. The beautiful bird fell on the side of Rosa's garden, making the witch very satisfied. At that moment, Rosa returned home and saw everything. <gasps> oh, poor you bird! Go with me, I will bandage your wounds for you. Thanks to Rosa's care, 
the beautiful bird quickly recovered. The bird was very happy <laughs> and felt grateful to her. When you feel better, I'll bring you back to the forest. The bird transformed into a beautiful fairy. I am a flower fairy. Each year, I turn into a bird for one day. But when I got here, I was injured. Fortunately, you saved me and took care of me. I want to repay you. Rosa, what do you wish for? You're a flower fairy? Can you give me lots of precious flowers from around the world? That is simple. The fairy raised her magic wand. Immediately, a beam of light flew around Rosa. I will give you my power. Now, all the flowers you plant will grow up really fast. You can also save the withered flowers. I will ask the birds to bring you lots of valuable flower seeds. That's great! Thank you so much! The fairy flower disappeared. Since then, every few days, the birds brought valuable flower seeds from around the world to Rosa for her to plant them. Thanks to that, Rosa had a beautiful flower garden full of colors from the precious flowers that no one in that kingdom had. Rosa happily shared some beautiful flowers with the people around her. That's why people always liked her. There's a judge in that kingdom who also liked flowers. He often passed by Rosa's house <gasps> and admired her beautiful garden. My God! I've never seen such a wonderful flower garden before. I also have many kinds of seeds. But why don't I have such beautiful flowers? Knowing that he liked flowers, Rosa gave him a basket of flowers. The birds brought the flower seeds from everywhere in the world here for me. Unbelievable! Is it true? But when he personally saw the birds bringing the seeds to Rosa, the judge believed what she said. Rosa became more and more beautiful, and everyone loved her. Seeing that, the witch Melanie was very jealous and hated her. <laughs> Rosa's flower garden is always beautiful and colorful. And your garden is always withered, just like you. Shut up! You don't know anything! Now, I'll destroy her garden. Immediately, she created a storm to sweep through Rosa's garden and destroyed all the flowers. Oh! My beautiful flowers! <laughs> now, let's how beautiful your garden is! Rosa desperately looked at the garden. She was very sad and cried for the flowers. Magically, her tears fell onto the flowers and made them grow back beautifully as before. It was one of the powers the flower fairy had given to her. <laughs> Melanie was so confused and angry about that. That's strange. Why does her garden still look normal? Rosa was given the magic by the flower fairy. She can always make the flowers fresh and beautiful. Flower fairy? Now I must go and see what other magic she has. The witch secretly went to Rosa's garden to observe. However, when approaching the flowers, the flowers told each other to use their thorns to hurt her. Oh, oh, it hurts! <laughs> You're so sneaky and useless. <laughs> You're laughing at me. Quickly, think of a way to harm her for me. Or else, I'll burn you up! Easy! Make everyone believe Rosa is a witch! 
You won't need to do anything. People will help you handle her. <laughs> Good idea. But how to do so? Rosa often goes to the flower field in the village. You can use magic to make the field become strange. The people will spread rumors about her. Melanie listened to the snake stick. She went to the flower field and cast her spell. <laughs> she made the beautiful flower field withered in a day. Everyone in the village started to gossip about it. Melanie took the opportunity and spread rumors to the villagers. Did you see that? The flower field was very beautiful, but after a night, they become withered. The surrounding also became so gloomy. So strange. I don't think ordinary people can do that. So, who did it? Only witches can do that. I think there must be a witch hiding in our village. Oh no! A witch! So scary! This rumor spread quickly throughout the kingdom, causing people to gossip. The rumor was also told in many different mysterious stories that made it hard for people to focus on working. It was so serious that the king had to offer Prince Bernard to go and investigate. When he arrived at the flower field where the rumor started, Bernard saw Rosa sowing and replanting flowers with some birds. The flowers she planted grew up very fast. Rosa happily looked at the beautiful flowers and smiled under the sun. <laughs> that made her beauty become even more and more beautiful. Prince Bernard was attracted because he had never seen such a beautiful girl. While gazing at Rosa, Bernard accidentally made a small noise. Rosa was startled and hurriedly took the seed basket and ran away quickly. She did not want people to know her miraculous abilities. Prince Bernard intended to chase after the mysterious girl, but then he remembered his mission. He looked at Rosa in regret, then went to meet the judge of the village. I have heard that an evil witch is harassing this village. I command you to find out the answer as soon as possible. Yes, Prince. I will definitely try to find out the truth. The judge led the soldiers to every single house to investigate. He even arrested the related people to question them. However, there were not any clues yet. Your chance has come! Go see the judge and accuse Rosa. He is being urged by Prince Bernard to find out who did that. He will believe you. <laughs> this time, Rosa will surely be arrested. <laughs> Melanie happily went to find the judge and accused Rosa. Sir, I know a strange story related to the witch, but I don't know if I should tell you or not because I'm scared. I'm right here to protect you, so don't feel scared. Just tell me what you know. Even though the flower field was destroyed, Rosa's flower garden is always beautiful. Sometimes I heard her talking and controlling the birds. That sounded like some kind of witchcraft. Oh yes, I have also seen her control the birds once. Yes, it was her. <clears throat> Where are the guards? Check Rosa here for me. The judge angrily sent the guards to take Rosa to court and invited Prince Bernard to witness the trial. Bernard was surprised huh? to see the beautiful girl who had been on the flower field the other day. Did you catch the wrong person? How can this beautiful and kind girl be a witch? Dear Prince, 
there was a person who saw her suspicious actions. Witch Rosa, do you have anything to say? Your Honor, I'm not a witch. You were wrong. Hmm. You think I would believe you? Where are the guards? Call Melanie in. Melanie entered and bowed to the judge. Rosa was shocked that it was her neighbor who accused her. Melanie, why did you do this? Your Honor, I saw her using her magic to make the flowers grow up immediately and even revive withered flowers. Not to mention, she could also control the birds. Everything is clear now. Guards, imprison this witch immediately. Your Honor, that's not true. The truth is... <laughs> At that moment, the flower fairy suddenly appeared. There were lots of flowers surrounding her. I am a flower fairy. I did give Rosa that power. A flower fairy? Can you prove what you said is true? Okay, look here. The fairy flower used her magic to make a lot of beautiful flowers grow up from the ground. A lot of birds also flew there because of the flowers. All of these created a wonderful scene. Now, everyone must believe <gasps> that she was a flower fairy. <laughs> a naval witch can never make the flowers grow, but only make them withered away. And Melanie is the real witch. While people were talking, the witch Melanie had sneaked away. However, the flower fairy used her magic to reveal the real appearance of the witch. The witch got very angry, took her snake stick out to attack the flower fairy. The fairy quickly cast a spell against it. When they were fighting, Prince Bernard used his sword to cut Melanie's snake stick off. The witch fell peacefully to the ground. Uh, uh, how dare you do that to me? Who do you think you are? Soldiers, quickly arrest the witch for me! The evil Melanie was arrested and sent to jail. Prince Bernard approached Rosa to help her get up. It was unfair for you. Thank you, Prince. I'm okay. Thank you, Fairy. Without you, we would have caught the wrong person. Yes, thank you. No problem. I just want to repay you. Then, the flower fairy disappeared. Prince Bernard and Rosa had secretly adored each other's <laughs> beauty and kindness. Perhaps soon, the whole kingdom will have a very beautiful wedding between the brave prince and the pretty girl who can make flowers bloom. of them will make a beautiful fairy tale love that will be remembered forever. Once upon a time, in a small village, there lived a hard-working miller. After many years of working, he had been able to have a house with a mill, a horse, and a cat. He had three sons. The two elder brothers named Carlos and Sergio were too lazy. They didn't do anything to help their father. In contrast, the youngest brother named Sergio was really hardworking. He always helped the miller with daily works. Therefore, he was deeply loved by his father. <laughs> Unfortunately, the miller passed away. This made Sergio so upset. But Hector and Carlos were so delighted because they thought that they could inherit all of the property of their father. The eldest brother took the house, the second took the horse. They left Sergio, the cat, with a small corner to sleep in the barn. The youngest brother sat inside the storage. 
saying sadly to himself, What can I do now? I can do nothing but grind away, and the cat will even be miserable living with me. Should I sell it to someone who can take better care of it? Listening to the story of its master, the puss suddenly jumped out of Sergio's hand, stood on two legs, and told him, My master, you need not sell me to anyone. You only need to buy a pair of boots for me that I can go out in and be seen among the people. Then you will soon be helped. The son of the miller was really surprised when hearing those words. However, he decided to believe the puss and used all of his savings to go to the store and buy a pair of boots for him. When the puss received his boots, he put them on, took a sack, filled it with corn, then threw it over his back and went on two legs like a human out the door. In the kingdom where Sergio lived, there was a king who only had a daughter. However, no one knew why the princess was sick all the time, and she could only be cured with a magic medicinal plant in the deep woods. The puss knew that, and he decided to go to the woods immediately to find that magic plant. Deep inside the woods, the puss saw a cave door which was shining. The door was so small that a normal person would not be able to get inside, but with his small body, the puss could do that. After entering the cave, the puss walked for a while and saw shining plants. He quickly picked those plants, put them inside the sack, and went straight away to the king's palace. In front of the gate of the palace, the puss met the gatekeepers. A gatekeeper said, Hey, where are you going? The puss answered quickly, To the king! Are you crazy? A puss wants to meet the king? Another gatekeeper said, Just let him go. The king is often bored. Maybe the cat can amuse him with his humming and spinning. When the puss was before the king, he bowed and said, Your majesty, this is the magical plant that my master, Count Sergio Batista Verdasco of the Duchy of Menacor, has just found deep inside the woods as a gift to cure the princess. The puss had made up a long and noble name for Sergio. After taking the magic medicinal plant, the princess was dynamic and joyful again. The king was so delighted that he ordered the servant <laughs> to take Puss to the treasure chamber to get as much gold as he wanted. He said, Bring it to your master and thank him again many times for his gift. The Puss got into the treasure chamber and was really overwhelmed by the precious gold and silver that the king had. Then he took some gold and put it in the bag. However, while taking the gold, the cat noticed a very beautiful outfit hanging in the chamber. The cat thought, If my master wears this suit, then the king will believe more that my master is a rich count. That night, Sergio sat at the barn's window, supported his head with his hand, and thought, I spent the last of my money for the puss's boots, and what large things will he be able to bring back? Just then, the puss stepped in threw the sack from his back, untied it, and shook out the gold in front of Sergio. <gasps> there, you have got something for the boots. The king also greets you and says many thanks to you. Huh? Sergio was too glad over the wealth he just had. He asked Puss, how could you get all of this? The Puss told him everything. Then he said, now you have enough money to buy a house, but it should not stay with that. Tomorrow, I will put my boots on again. You will become richer still. I also told the king that you are a count. The next day, Puss went into the woods again to catch partridges, a bird that was pretty precious at the time. The Puss opened the sack, spread the corn apart, and laid the corn into the grass and led it behind a hedge. There he hid himself, snuck around, and lurked. The partridges soon came running and one after the other hopped into the sack. When a good quantity was in it, the Puss pulled the cord closed ran to and twisted their heads around. Then he threw the sack over his shoulder and went straight away to the king's palace. Just like the day before, after catching the partridges, the puss entered the palace and said to the king, Your majesty, my master, Count Sergio Bautista Verdasco from the Duchy of Manacor respectfully sends you his best regards, and these are the partridges that he has just hunted deep inside the woods as a present to your majesty. The king happily accepted the precious <laughs> birds. Then he asked the cat to go into the treasure chamber again to get gold and said, 
bring the gold back to your master, thank him again many times for his present, and remember, tell your master to visit my palace when he has time. The puss replied, On behalf of my count, I would like to thank your majesty. I will definitely convey your words to my master. Then the puss entered the treasure chamber again, but this time he went directly to get the noble outfit that he had seen the previous time. He immediately put it in the sack and went back home. Sergio was sitting in the living room of his new house. Suddenly, he saw Puss coming along with the sack. He took out the outfit and said, Tomorrow you will wear this costume and go to the palace with me to meet the king. Remember to invite him to your palace. If he asks anything, you just have to say that everything will be arranged by me. Sergio doubted a little bit, but he still believed the puss and replied, It's all right, thank you. Tomorrow I'll go to the palace with you. The next day, Sergio and the puss walked together into the palace. Your Majesty, let me introduce you to my master, Count Sergio. Your Majesty. Thanks to the noble outfit, the king thought Sergio was a real count, a brave man who went to the woods to find the magic plant and catch partridges for him. So he treated Sergio very well. The king also invited Sergio to stay and have dinner with him and the princess. During dinner, the king said to Sergio, Thank you, Count Sergio, for the gifts, especially the magic plant, which helped my daughter to recover. The princess also added, Thank you very much, Count Sergio. The princess looked appreciatively at Sergio. He was startled when he met her eyes. <laughs> And from that moment, Sergio knew that he had fallen in love with the princess. Sergio replied calmly, as the puss had told him to do. It is my honor to help your majesty and your highness. It's just a small thing which is not worth talking about. By chance, I would like to invite your majesty and your highness to visit my castle. Okay, we will definitely do it if we have the chance. Yes, your majesty, I have assigned my puss to arrange everything to welcome you to my place. At that time, a nearby kingdom was ruled by an evil magician, so the people there were extremely miserable. The cat decided to go to this kingdom and check the situation. When the cat arrived at the magician's castle, the cat blatantly stepped forward in front of him. The magician mm. looked at the puss with a disdainful look and asked, Why do you come here? The cat bowed and said, Sir, my master is Count Sergio Bautista Verdasco from the Duchy of Manacor. Hearing that you have supreme magic, my master sent me to bring in some gold as a present for you. The magician invited the cat into the castle. He smiled and accepted the gold. He asked, Why haven't I heard your master's name before? What does he want from me? The puss replied, It's really simple. He wants you to be the magician for his kingdom, and you will have everything you want. Hmm. The magician's face started to glow. He thought, hmm. There is so much gold for the debut. If I become a magician for them, there will absolutely be much more. But the magician was still haughty, adding, My magic is supreme. Your master is looking for the right person. Of course, but you have to prove your abilities first. How do you want me to prove it? I heard that you can transform yourself into every animal you choose by your own will. As far as a hound, fox, or even wolf are concerned, that I could believe. But what about an elephant? That seems to me quite impossible. And therefore, I have come to convince myself. The sorcerer proudly said, That is a trifle to me. And in the blink of an eye, the magician turned into an elephant. The puss said, That is unbelievable and unheard of. I never could have even imagined such a thing. But I would be even more impressed if you could transform yourself into a tiny animal, such as a mouse. Then I would know you can certainly do more than any other magician in the world. But that would certainly be too much for you to do. The magician was delighted at hearing these sweet words. He said, Oh, that is also a trifle to me. Immediately, he turned into a mouse. The puss, in a flash, caught the mouse with one jump and ate him up. After defeating the magician, the puss took his crown and scepter and had it proclaimed throughout the kingdom by communicator. 
The wicked magician was destroyed by Count Sergio. Now the king is owned by the kind Count Sergio Bautista Verdasco. In order to bless his people, Count Sergio decided to exempt everyone from taxes for a full year. The puss led Sergio into the palace, told him the whole story, and said, Wow! You only need to stay here and wait. I will go and invite the king and the princess to come here to visit your kingdom. The next day, the puss went into the palace of the king to invite him and the princess to visit Sergio's kingdom. On their way, they came to a large field. The king asked, Who does this field belong to? It belongs to the Count Sergio, your majesty. Thereafter, they came to a large grain field. Who does this grain field belong to, people? The people who were harvesting quickly replied, It belongs to kind Count Sergio, your majesty. The king looked surprised and said, Oh, kind Count Sergio, what a large and good estate. Then the wagon crossed the jungle. The king asked, who do these woods belong to, people? They belong to the kind Count Sergio, your majesty. The king was astonished even more and said, Count Sergio must be a rich man. I do not even have such a magnificent forest as this. Then they came to the palace, and as the wagon stopped, the puss jumped out and said, Your majesty, welcome to the palace of Count Sergio, my master. May this visit honor him and make him happy all of his life. The king stepped out and marveled at the magnificent building. It was almost larger and more beautiful than his own palace. The count led the king and the princess up the stairs into the dining room. It was shimmering with gold and precious stones. The king was really satisfied with what Sergio had. The king asked him, You are really talented and powerful, count. Do you want to marry my daughter? That has been my wish since the first time I saw her. Thank you so much, your majesty. The king agreed to marry the princess to Sergio. Evening, Sergio talked to the puss. He said, Thank you so much, puss. Without you, I would have nothing. I would still be a poor man living in a small corner of that barn. The puss smiled and said, my master, you are well deserved to have all of these things. When I was a kitten, you were the only one who cared for me <laughs> and played with me. So this is your reward for your kind heart. <laughs> After that, they continued to talk happily. The next day, a wedding was performed in Sergio's palace with everyone's blessing. They lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a small house on a prairie, lived a poor couple who earned a living off of fishing. The most valuable thing they had was their strong horse. The poor family didn't have any children despite having lived together mm -hmm. for a long time. They always wished mm -hmm. they had a child. It has been so long, but we still didn't have a child yet. Our house feels so empty, dear. It really does. I only wish we had a child that would be enough for me. Then, the fisherman went to the river to fish as usual, but he couldn't catch any fish that day. Hmm? Maybe today is not a lucky day for me. The fisherman decided to try for the last time. This time, there was only one tiny goldfish in the net. The strange goldfish was shining brightly. Mr. Fisherman, I'm still little. Could you please spare my life and put me back in the river? I'll be very grateful. The fisherman Ooh. was very surprised to see a speaking goldfish. However, he didn't want to harm it, so he let it go. Okay, don't worry, little goldfish. I will let you go back home. The man put the fish into the water. It went up again and told him, Thank you very much. In return, I'm gonna give you some precious gifts. Magically, in the fisherman's Ooh. hands, there were three golden beans and three silver beans. Please. 
please give your wife a pair of beans to eat. Then go and feed your horse another pair. And for the last pair, you can plant them in your backyard. The fisherman brought three golden beans and three silver huh? beans back and did exactly what the goldfish said. Miraculously, soon after that, the fisherman's wife became pregnant and after nine months, she gave birth to a twin. The older brother's body was made of gold and the youngest brother's body was made of silver. The couple was very happy. They named the golden boy Dieter and the silver boy Roland. Their horse also gave birth to two beautiful golden and silver ponies. In their backyard, there were two beanstalks, a golden and a silver one. As time passed by, their two sons became tall, strong and got along very well with each other. The two ponies also grew up. They became very big and strong. The two magic beanstalks also grew up very fast. On the golden beanstalk, there was a strong golden sword. And the silver beanstalk created a strong silver shield. <gasps> One day, the golden boy Dieter asked his parents to let him travel the world to broaden his horizons. But my son, it's dangerous out there. How can you deal with things alone? Don't worry, Dad. I will bring the golden horse and the golden sword with me. But how would we know if you are safe or not? How can we not worry? Mother, if the golden beanstalk is still green, it means that I'm well. And if it suddenly withers, it means I am in danger. Because oh. Dieter was so determined to go, his parents had to agree with him. Dieter took the golden sword and the golden horse and set out to travel to the places he had never been before. He went to a strange land. When he was asking around for directions to the nearest town, a stranger kindly showed him the way. Cross this forest, you will see a busy and crowded town. But do not go to the forest alone, because there are two cruel and greedy robbers there. Both you and your horse are made of gold. You would definitely be in danger. But the more he heard, the more curious he got. Dieter quickly rode his horse towards the forest without any fear. As expected, when he went deep into the forest, the two robbers jumped out in front of him and threatened him. Hey you! This forest belongs to us. Anyone who goes through here has to pay a fee. <gasps> quickly give us everything you have now. <laughs> Both he and the horse are made of gold. Today's our lucky day. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Dieter raised his golden sword high and cut the robber's swords into pieces. <sighs> Please forgive us. We are so sorry. <sighs> you greedy robbers, get out of my sight. The two robbers were frightened. They quickly ran away. Help me! <gasps> Huh? Someone is calling for help. He followed the sound, then he found a beautiful girl tied to the tree. Please, please save me. Did those two robbers tie you up here? Yes, I am Alisa. I'm from the capital over there. I hung out in the forest, then they caught me and tied me here. Luckily, you came to rescue me. And I am Dieter. I am on my way to travel around the world. You are my destiny, beautiful lady. Dieter and Alisa went out of the forest together and went back to Alisa's house in the capital. It was a spacious, beautiful house. When they arrived, Alisa told her father how Dieter saved her. Her father saw that <laughs> Alisa really liked the men, so he asked Dieter to stay for a few days. After a few days together, their love grew stronger and stronger. One day, Dieter dreamed that he had hunted a beautiful deer. The morning after, he was determined to go into the forest to look for the deer. Alisa went to stop him. If you go hunting alone, I'm afraid bad things will happen. I think you should stay at home. Don't worry, I will find that deer and come back to you. 
Unable to convince Dieter, Alisa had to let him go. As soon as he entered the forest, Dieter immediately saw the beautiful deer just like in his dream. He chased after it. The deer panicked and quickly ran away. He ran to an old castle, then suddenly disappeared. Oh, it's an ancient castle, so beautiful. Dieter took his horse into the castle to find the deer. But when he entered, Dieter was surprised to see the witch, oh. Layla, standing in front of the castle. She asked Dieter, Who are you? This is my castle. Who allowed you to enter my castle? I'm sorry for entering your castle. I am hunting and chasing after a deer. Then it's disappeared, so I came inside to find it. So it was you who scared my beautiful little deer. Once you're here, you can huh? never escape. You will be honored to become the next statue in my collection. The witch immediately used her magic to make Dieter and his horse immediately turn into stones. Oh, wow! How beautiful this statue is! <laughs> when Dieter was in danger, the yellow magic beanstalk <gasps> immediately withered. Roland noticed that and knew <gasps> that his brother Dieter was in trouble. Roland quickly took his silver shield, said goodbye to his parents, and set out to look for his brother Dieter. <laughs> Just like Dieter, Roland went to some strange places that he had never set his foot to. Wherever Roland went, he asked everyone about Dieter, but no one knew anything about his brother. Then, Roland reached Alisa's house. Roland saw Alisa standing oh. outside the door, anxiously waiting for someone. Hello, can I ask you something? Did you see a golden boy who carried a golden sword and rode a golden horse passed by? The golden young man? Are you looking for someone named Dieter? That's right, he's my brother. Your brother? That's why you and him are so similar. I'm Alessa. He was at my house a few days ago. He went into the forest to hunt a deer and hasn't come back yet. Huh? Really? Please don't worry. I will go and look for him. Roland decided to go into the forest and he also saw the beautiful deer. That's the deer she talked about. If I follow it, I might find my brother Dieter. The deer ran into the old castle and disappeared. Roland chased after it and led the horse inside. When he entered the castle, Roland huh? was shocked to realize that the huge stone statue was his brother with his golden horse. Oh brother, why did you turn into stone? Suddenly, the witch Layla appeared in front of him and said, <laughs> oh, now there's a silver man. Your brother is now my statue. And now you're here. You will join my statue collection as well. Oh, so it was you who did this. You wicked witch, reverse your spell immediately. Or else I won't forgive you. Let me see what you can do. Layla attacked Roland with her power but he quickly dodged it. She kept using her power at Roland, but couldn't hit him even once. Ha! You're pretty fast! Let me see if you can handle this! She used all of her power to attack Roland. This time, he didn't dodge it, but used his silver shield to fight back her magic. Her power hit the shield and bounced back to her, making her fall down. <laughs> Suddenly, she turned into a stone statue. Her curse on Dieter had been lifted. The golden boy Dieter turned back into a human. The two brothers happily hugged each other. The old castle also brightened up. There was a light coming from the room in the castle. Roland was surprised, <gasps> so he slowly walked upstairs. 
Roland went into the room and saw a beautiful girl sleeping oh. soundly on a yellow chair. She was Princess Isabel, the owner of the castle, but she had been controlled by the witch Layla for a long time. Looking at the beauty of Isabel, Roland immediately fell in love. He woke the princess up with a kiss. When she knew Roland was the person who had saved her and the whole castle from the witch, Isabel also fell in love with the brave silver boy. In the end, the two brothers had found their true love. They all got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time in a peaceful village, there was a boy named Rowan. He lived alone in a small house. Rowan was very hardworking. Every day, he was always the first person to wake up in the village. Then he woke people up with his drums so everyone could start a new working day early. At night, when everyone finished their working days, Rowan used his drum to remind people to be alert for thieves of fire. That's why he's always the last to come home and rest. Everyone in the village is grateful to hear Rowan's drum play, and he is respected <laughs> by many. One day, Rowan passed by a lake on his way home late at night. Huh? He suddenly saw a beautiful piece of silk cloth hanging on a tree. Rowan had never seen such a beautiful piece of cloth before. He looked around to find its owner. It's beautiful. Someone must have left it here. I should take it home and find its owner to return it. When he got home, Rowan felt so tired after a long working day, so he put the cloth under his pillow and fell asleep. At midnight, a beautiful girl suddenly appeared in the middle of the room. Mr. Drummer, please wake up. Rowan woke up and was huh? so surprised to see the beautiful girl. Who are you? Why did a beautiful lady like you come here in the middle of the night? I am Adela, the princess of this kingdom. The witch, Vera, has imprisoned me on top of the glass mountain. Every day, I can only go out when she sleeps. That's when her power weakens. I usually go swimming in the lake and come back before she wakes up. But unfortunately, you took my piece of cloth away. Without it, I cannot return to the glass mountain. Can you please give it back to me? Sorry, princess. I didn't see anyone there. So I brought it home. I will give it back to you immediately. Then Rowan gave Adela back her piece of cloth. Thank you. But princess, I promise I will save you from that evil witch. I would be so grateful to you for that. First, you will have to climb up the high glass mountain. Then, you will have oh. to deal with so many challenges from the witch. They are even more difficult than getting to the top of the mountain. Don't worry. I will do anything to save you. I will climb the glass mountain to free you. But I don't know how to get there. To go to the glass mountain, first you must cross the jungle where the giants live. But they are huge and aggressive, so no one dares to go there. This challenge cannot stop me. Don't worry. I will overcome those giants to save you. I will give you this ring. When you get to the top of the mountain, it will be helpful for you. After Adela instructed Rowan, she put on the silk cloth and flew back to the mountain. Early the next day, the courageous Rowan set out to find the glass mountain. He only brought his drum with him. He walked for so long and arrived in a strange forest which had so many incredibly tall trees. Could it be the forest where the aggressive giants are living? Suddenly, the ground shook very hard. Behind Rowan was a giant that was as big as a mountain. Ah, oh, it's just a tiny boy. How dare you come here? Do you know where it is? I'm not scared of you. 
With this scrum in my hands, I can call thousands of my people waiting outside to come here at once. Oh, thousands! What can you tiny people do to me? I alone would be enough to crush you all. Don't look down on us. Humans are small but very clever. We are hiding around the forest. In order to crush us, you will have to destroy your forest. No, this forest is my home. There is no way I would destroy it. We will also divide into small groups to disturb you every day, so you cannot rest at all. Everybody needs to rest, including giants. Then by the time you're all exhausted, we will attack. Do you think you can win with that strategy? Of course, or else I wouldn't dare to come here alone. Hmm. Humans are clever. What if they actually do it? We can easily fight with bears or tigers, but humans are much smarter and more dangerous. I think making nice with them is better. Hey, drummer! I want to make peace with you. If you leave this forest and let us giants live in peace, we will help you with anything. All right, I will ask them to leave and won't disturb you. As long as you agree to take me through this forest to the top of the glass mountain, yes, I agree. But you must tell them to leave this forest first. Rowan agreed. He immediately played the drum, and the sound could be heard throughout the forest. Okay, they left already. Huh? They left already? Humans are so hard to understand. When you call them, you play the drum. Then when you tell them to leave, you also play the drum. Because we humans are clever. When I play the drum, I can create different rhythms, and they will know exactly which is the signal to attack or to retreat. Oh, you guys are smart. The giant Ulrich now really admired the tiny people's intelligence. Ulrich. Put his giant hand down for Rowan to jump on it. As Ulrich ordered, the other giants also happily helped Rowan. <laughs> They passed Rowan to each other's hand, and Rowan just needed to walk from one giant's hand to another. The giant's arms were incredibly long. Soon, <laughs> Rowan could see the high glass mountain in front of him. Finally. He reached the top of the glass mountain. After looking around for a while, Rowan found a small house on the top of the mountain. He approached and knocked on the door. <coughs> An old woman opened the door. That was the witch Vera. Who are you? How could you come here? How come those giants didn't eat you? I'm Rowan, a drummer. I am their friend, so they helped me come here. Now I'm so hungry. Could you give me something to eat? That's strange. <laughs> I have a lot of food to give you, but you have to do one thing for me. That's okay. I am starving now. After Rowan finished his meal, Vera led him to the lake and gave him a small <laughs> bucket that had many holes. You must drain the lake with this little bucket. Tomorrow, when the sun rises, I'll come here to check. If you cannot finish, you will be my slave forever. Rowan tried to use the bucket to scoop water from the lake, but the water in the bucket just kept flowing out through the holes. Until it was dark, Rowan could only took a little bit of the water out. She's clearly making it difficult for me. How can I finish before sunrise? How can I rescue Adela now? Ah! Oh. I will give you this ring. When you get to the top of the mountain, it will be helpful for you. That's right, the ring. I almost forgot about it. Rowan gently twisted the ring, and then a magical light flashed. The lake immediately dried out. And there was no water left. 
The witch would never imagine I could do this. Now she must be asleep. I have to find a way to punish her. Waiting until midnight, Groen stood on the top of the mountain and played the drum loudly. The sound echoed all over the mountain. The witch Vera was sleeping s o o n Then she was suddenly woken up. What? What happened? She immediately ran outside. She was surprised to see Rowan playing the drum so loud. You fool! How dare you play the drum so loud at midnight? Did you know you ruined my god's sleep? Oh, there you are! I just want to tell you that I completed your challenge. Vera was so surprised huh? to see the lake was empty. How could you do that with the broken bucket? If you try your best, then nothing is impossible. No, no way! Huh? Oh my God! The witch suddenly disappeared. As soon as she vanished, Princess Adela <laughs> appeared in front of Rowan. Thank you, Rowan. You are a brave drummer. You have gone through a long, difficult, and dangerous journey to come here to save me. You have defeated the witch and freed me from her curse. But uh, I, I didn't really do anything. You have defeated the witch thanks to your courage. The witch's curse was that only a brave person who would overcome difficult challenges could save me. It was thanks to the magic ring that you gave me. Without it, I wouldn't have completed her challenge. Even with the ring, not everyone has courage enough to come all the way here to accept the witch's challenge. That's because, well, I fell in love with you. Oh. For you, I can do anything. But, oh. but, I am just an ordinary drummer. I know I don't deserve you, Adela. Oh, my brave man, you are the <gasps> one for me. You are the only person who could save me. I also fell in love with you. But I have no treasures or jewels to give to you. I adore you, <gasps> not because of what you have, but because of who you are. <laughs> you are my greatest treasure. Princess Adela took Rowan back to the palace to meet her father. The king was so happy to see his daughter safe after a long time. When he knew Rowan was the one who saved Adela from the witch's curse, the king was very pleased with the drama. Their marriage was celebrated beautifully in the palace, and they lived happily together ever after. <laughs>